going live on YouTube is one of the best ways to grow your watch time. I mean, check out this graph from a channel we started working on in March 2020. Can you guess where the live stream started? I'll give you a clue. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It was, of course, where the massive spike was. Now, this video will cover using pre-recorded videos in your live stream that will either allow you to play a video as part of your show or pre-record it and broadcast it as a live. Now, there is, of course, a moral issue with telling me you're going live and you're not, but I'll address that more at the end along with some other pros and cons. Firstly, here's how to live stream a pre-recorded video on YouTube. You need to download OBS. It's free, flip and love free. Then set up your camera. If you're using a DSLR, then there's an entire in-depth video here which will show you how to do that. You start by adding a scene. A scene is something you will flick between in the live to go from your camera to your pre-recorded video. The first scene you want to set up is your camera. So click Add, then name it, and then go to Sources and click Add, and then select Video Capture Device and name it. Now, make sure that's working and go to Sources again, and then select Add and name your new scene as you see fit. Now select Add on Sources and VLC Video Source, name it and press OK. We see new options appear. Push the Add icon and click on Add Files and then select your video file. It accepts a range of different file types. You can get going by pressing OK or add another video to the list to create a playlist. So when you do this, it will play another video straight after the first. Untick Loop Playlist, otherwise it will keep going around and around unless you want to do that. For example, if you have an animation you want to move non-stop or a video overlay, you can also shuffle a playlist too, so you could add animations to your stream in different orders. Now, we want to look at the visibility behavior in the dropdown. You have a few options. Stop when not visible. Basically, this means when you change scenes, your video will stop if it's in the background. It will go back to the start after swapping screens. Pause when not visible. This is the same, except your video will just pause instead of start again when you swap scenes. Then always play just means it will run in the background no matter what you do. For this example, I'm going to use pause. Then when you've decided, press OK. You can add more video files to the same source. Just note they all play at the same time. So if both videos have sound, it will create a lot of confusion. This is really so you can have overlays to your videos, things like that. To flick between your video and your webcam, you click on the scene that it's relevant to. If you want to play a video and remain on screen, you select your webcam image in the source box and resize it by dragging the corners so you are only in a small part of the image. Great for things like reaction videos. Or if you want the video small, you do the same again by resizing it. The sound carries over from your video, so remember to turn that down on the volume control bar if you don't want it to play, and keep an eye on the audio channel to make sure it's not clipping. Basically, you don't want it in the red too much or at all, otherwise it might distort. Now look at your streaming settings. In many cases, YouTube will ask you to obtain a bitrate of 2500 in the stream in 128720. This will ensure the minimal lag and good quality, and I'd recommend it, except I like to bump the bitrate up to about 3,000, sometimes even 5,000. You'll need to test which works best for you. If you are just live streaming and you don't have a camera set up, I found that you can stream in 1920 by 1080 Full HD and there's less lag and less frames dropped and it just looks way better. Always test these settings yourself though. Then you go to YouTube and you set up the stream. Now we go on to the pros and cons of this whole entire setup. If you are just wanting to add a video or animation to a live stream, then there are no cons. You'll just make really slick looking live videos. If you're thinking about faking a live stream, which I do not recommend as it's a bit naughty, then let's look at both sides to the argument. Well, the pros of faking it, you really want to go live, but there's only one of you. It's kind of a pro. Going live to a high standard will require someone to help with the setup, monitor the show and respond to the chat messages. Batteries go, lag happens, cameras overheat. Try presenting and dealing with all of these things at the same time. It's tricky. Well, it's actually it's impossible. In this case, recording the live just before you actually go live and then making sure it runs smoothly on your own means you can also access the chat moderator and it's a little less misleading. You could even say at the start this was recorded half an hour ago and I'm manning the comments, just be honest. But then you could just go and do this as a YouTube premiere anyway, so it's pointless. The second thing that I might let you off with is nerves. Going live is terrifying. Even if you're used to being on camera, it is scary. It still scares me. Filming your video first and being able to edit it means you can go live and maintain your quality and image. Next, we have the fact that when you go live, you get more reach. Simple. You get a flashing live badge. YouTube tells more people, apparently. 
The last pro is the quality of the stream. In testing for this, I found that you can stream in full HD rather than 720p without hardly any drop frames or lag, so it looks and sounds better. So long as what you've recorded obviously was good in the first place. The cons of doing this? You're lying. Yes, that's right. Saying you're live when you're not is dishonest. If you make no bones about it, that it's pre-recorded, then fine, but otherwise you're betraying the people who build your channel. If it goes wrong, people realize you're not live, you could be finished, finished. The solution, go live and use video a lot with it. So when we give talks at events, we use our videos in those talks a lot. We don't think, oh, that's a cop out. We've already made the content and can't do the same things we can do as we can in an edit. So we like to mix it up. Open your presentation and play a video, present video, present video and so on. The result is a slick live. And if you thought this was something you'd like more of, then hit subscribe and that notification bell so we can help you go live, make videos, present and help you grow the following you deserve. And of course, check out this live playlist here.